Chips like this one, containing so-called semiconductors, keep the world turning. The world market for semiconductors is worth $600 billion per year. Demand usually outstrips supply. Without them, much of today's technology couldn't be built. Most semiconductors are produced in one small country, Taiwan, an island nation off the coast of China. It's only 400 kilometers long, but it's home to almost 24 million people. China conducts regular military exercises around Taiwan. China insists that Taiwan is part of China. The prospect of a Chinese invasion is stoking fears among industrialized nations that a dramatic shortage of semiconductors could be on its way. Could the West survive without Taiwan's semiconductor production? And how can supply chain disruptions be avoided in the future? Semiconductors are part and parcel of everyday life. Aviation, communication, traffic management, satellite technology. High tech wouldn't work without them. Somebody has linked uh, semiconductors to the oil of the, the 21st century. And if you then think about uh, how much effort nations and, and states went through to secure access to oil over the history of the, of the 20th century, you kind of get a sense of uh, where semiconductors perhaps are. Taiwan dominates the semiconductor market with a 66% share. It's followed by South Korea with 17% and China with 8%. The rest of the world combined produces 9%. Taiwan's semiconductors are produced by two main suppliers. The majority come from the company TSMC, followed by UMC. Other smaller companies make up the rest. It's a virtual monopoly for the island nation, exacerbating fears of disruptions in production. Recent years have seen production repeatedly come to a standstill due to chip shortages, for example, in the car industry. The reality is that the demand for semiconductors worldwide of many different types, again, not just the most advanced chips, is growing exponentially because of technological development, the growth of the Internet of Things, increasing computerization of everything. This is a semiconductor from the 1950s, containing just six transistors. Today's chips contain several billion transistors. The connections are much thinner than a hair. Their diameter is comparable to the length of the spikes on a coronavirus. This spike protein is about 10 nanometers long. So by the sizes we use in chip manufacturing, that's already fairly large. In an effort to reduce dependence on Taiwanese chip suppliers, countries in the West have launched programs worth billions to build new semiconductor factories in the US and the EU. Both the US government and the EU Commission in Brussels have signed off on the ambitious projects, which will cover all stages of microprocessor development and production. The goal is to build their own semiconductor industry. Mark Liu, CEO of TSMC, the Taiwanese world market leader, is playing a major role in these developments. He's currently building a new semiconductor factory in Phoenix, Arizona for 3.5 billion US dollars. TSMC also plans to build a new factory in the EU, most likely in Germany. Other chip manufacturers like Intel, Infineon and Samsung have announced billion euro investments to set up additional production sites in various industrialized countries. And so to the extent that um, reshoring takes place over the next several years, um, this is probably going to be led by TSMC, by its Korean competitor Samsung, um, moving or locating new factories in the US and the EU as a result of the incentives which are provided under the CHIPS Act. For the time being, the world will continue to rely on semiconductors. The new infrastructure will take years to build, so supply is set to remain tight.